Hey guys, thanks for checking out my Project Bumblebee series. In this episode, we're going to do a full restoration of the dashboard, including the upper vinyl, basket weave or brick weave face, depending on your year, and the dash top. Now a lot of cars could do with a dash refresh and I'll show you how to do it using parts from 914 rubber. If you remember in episode 2 I took out the entire dash so I could get it done while the bumblebee was at the body shop. And if you're going to work on your dash I suggest you remove it as well. It's like 8 easy screws and 4 slightly harder bolts. But it'll be so much simpler to work on and the quality of the restoration work will be a lot better. Taking out your dash is like dropping the engine. Once you do it, you'll wonder why you ever tried to avoid it. Okay, the first step is to remove all the old foam and glue. It makes a mess, so I'm gonna do that outside. Okay, I'm just gonna use a nasty old scraper. All right, I'm gonna use some uh, lacquer thinner to get this off, another good reason why this needs to be outside. I'm just gonna let it sit for a little bit. Now you don't have to take it down to bare metal, but I think it's a good idea to get all the adhesive off because you don't want to try to glue down new foam on top of old adhesive. If that old adhesive comes up, so will your new stuff. And you really don't want to take this out of the car once it's in. I'm just going to take this down. Now most of this is going to be covered by the dash material, but there may be a few areas where a little black will peek out. So I'm just going to clean this up and shoot it with some rattle can satin. Okay, I'm just going to hit it with a tack rag. And I'm just using some Rust-Oleum primer here, mostly on the areas where I sanded through, but I'm just going to give a nice overall coat. All right, now that we have a fresh, clean slate to work with, let's start with the upper dash pad. It's a nice kit. It comes with the foam and the dash material. Okay, the first thing I'm gonna do is uh, get my dash set up on some saw horses. And you see it's kind of rocky here, so I'm gonna use some clamps to get it secured. And these are just like uh, squeeze clamps. Get this in a position here and then just tighten it up. I'll do this one, this side. Now that it's clamped, dash is not going anywhere and I have a good surface or a good way to see exactly what I'm doing. Now the way this works is there's going to be foam here and then there'll be vinyl on top of that foam uh, and that's what finishes things off. This material here, this foam, uh, has a, a solid side and an open cell side and we're going to put the solid side down because it'll be a better gluing surface. Um, the open side, you don't want to put a lot of glue on just because it'll get pockety and wavy and you just don't want that. So we're going to glue this down. We'll be using contact cement to put this down and that means that there'll be glue on this side and glue on this side. And the thing about this contact cement is that once it goes down, you can't reposition it. So it's really important that we get this located properly so that when it goes down, it goes down right the first time. This piece is cut uh, oversize, and what will happen is once it's on, we'll go around and, uh, and trim the edges to match. So we just have to kind of get it in the ballpark of where it needs to be, and then take it from there. What I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of base this off the bottom edge here because this little ridge is going to be where the dash cap kind of comes down and over. So as long as I'm past this ridge here, I should be okay. And to make sure that I get everything lined up the way I want, I'm going to use blue painter's tape and just simply get this into position. make sure it's where I want it to be just centered on the piece and then I'm just gonna kind of tack it down since I have the tape in position uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna do a slice just to uh, 
free it from the tape. And the reason why I did that is that I'll do the gluing here, and when I put the glue back down, I have a visual reference for exactly where it needs to be. So if it's like this, I know it's wrong. But if it's like this, I know we're in exactly the right spot. And I'll work from the center out to the sides. I like to keep things kind of nearby when I'm gluing, and I will definitely be moving the Ferrari <laughs> when I glue. But uh, to create a little bit of a table, I'm just gonna use the box that the dash top came in and use that kind of as a, a, a gluing surface that I can spray on and then I can spray here and here without having to move a lot. Now this is just a simple cheap Harbor Freight spray gun with a pretty wide tip on it like a 1.8 millimeters or maybe two millimeters is what you need to spray glue. Uh, I'm going to use the uh, DAP Weldwood Landau uh, cement. It only comes in a gallon can so I transferred it into four quart cans to make it more manageable. I really like using DAP Wellwood as opposed to anything that comes in a spray can because it's made especially for vinyl. It can be brushed on or sprayed on and it'll hold up in high heat. You don't want to park your car in the hot summer sun for a few hours only to find out that your glue gave way. Some spray can glues are better than others, but DAP Wellwood Landau top and trim is the gold standard. Besides, I love the fact that they're keeping the term Landau top alive. Google it. The nice thing about these cheap guns is that, and with glue, is that I'll be able to just leave the glue in this gun. I don't even have to clean it, do anything. Just leave it there. You know, maybe just wipe the nozzle so that it doesn't clog. And uh, it'll be ready to go for next time when I'm doing the carpet. And then we're ready to test the... Uh, the pattern of the glue and make sure that uh, we got it spraying the way we want it to and then we'll dial it in with you know some of the other controls on the gun here and get it so that it's just spraying like a spider web. And now I'm going to lay this out and do the same thing with the glue on the piece that's going down. Now we're going to let that tack up because that's what the uh, directions call for. You got to let it go for a couple minutes and then when we put things together, it will be golden. Now remember I took that paint part, I'm going to line that up exactly where I wanted it to be. It looks like I'm completely covered. So now that that's in, what I'm going to do is I'm going to press it down. Okay, the foam is uh, firmly attached to the dash, and now I've got to cut all the excess around. Now it's okay if it's not quite right on the edge of this here, because the vinyl is what's really going to wrap around. That's what we want. So we just want to trim this flush to the edge. We don't want to have this like pushing down here. I'd much rather have a good place for the vinyl to adhere to, good metal here, than to bend this around here and have the vinyl only pulling from down here. So I want it to pull from down here and here I want it to adhere to. Really, really sharp, brand new razor blade is essential. And what we'll do is just kind of find a spot to come in and just simply trim along the metal edge here. It doesn't have to be neat, super neat. It's gonna get completely wrapped with the vinyl, so. I know it looks scary, but I like to use bare razor blades. Now putting them in a utility knife just doesn't give me the same control. And with all the new blades I'll go through, it would take a lot longer. I gotta be careful though. So that's pretty much what you want. There's a nice padding here and there's a good tooth or good place for the vinyl to grab here and then underneath as well. Once you have it lined up, you can kind of go pretty quickly. And then there's also this area around the instrument cluster, um, which we're gonna trim out too. This spot right here is uh, where the dash top is gonna sit, kind of right on this ridge. So, 
I don't want to trim the foam back a little bit, which will give the vinyl some more metal to adhere to so they can pull it tight. All right, now I've got the, uh, the foam pretty much cut and trimmed. And uh, now here's the actual dash top material. And I'm just going to kind of test fit it here, just get it in the right spot. It's pretty flat, so when we go to actually do the install, it's not like I'm going to have to like pull and get things to hold. It's actually laying really, really flat, so I can just kind of fold this edge down and press this edge in. Now when I'm laying this down, I just want to make sure that there's enough vinyl past this ridge here because when the dash top sits, it'll just press that down. I don't want it to be short. Just enough so that it hits the metal here and makes a nice reveal. Now I'm going to spray this with glue and I'm going to double this back so I'm going to put some paper here so that I don't get glue on the rest of the dash, just the part I want. trace around where the desktop's going. Make sure that everything's adhering well. To get the dash top finished off properly, you'll need to make some relief cuts and glue the vinyl to the front edge. So as you see that there's a curve in here and there's no way this is just gonna fit like that. So what we're gonna have to do is cut some reliefs and we're gonna do it gently to begin with. We're not gonna go too far because you know we may not need to go all that far. So you can see already that that relief is gonna work and that relief is gonna work. So I can probably get away with just one cut. The idea is to give as much relief as you can, but don't cut up the dash. Try to cut it as little as possible. I'll brush some glue in here and then on this side too and then pull everything down so that it's nice and taut. So we'll get this going in here. And also underneath, because that's where it's going to stretch around and wrap. All right, we're ready to have the contact happen. So we'll just gingerly pull this, not too tight. When you see what's great about the DAP is as soon as you make contact with the other side. I mean, it's down. Now I'll just fold it underneath. Then as we get over here, we'll have to make some other cuts and do some folds to get that to fit. So you gotta go slowly as you get around all these articulations, but if you take your time and use the right stuff, it comes out great. So now we'll do some glue here especially these little flaps. Now here's where the DAP stuff really shines because you don't need much surface area for the glue to hold things down really tight. All right, the glue's set. So we'll now bend this little piece under like we're wrapping a Christmas gift. And work our way down the edge of the slip. Now from the front, you can see uh, how nice and neat this line looks and smooth and upholstered. It looks really great. Over here, I've got to start working on this, um, but it really is coming together. Now it's easier to brush this at this phase rather than spray it, but I guess you could spray it. Got to make sure it's right to the edge there because that's what's going to wrap around and keep this thing from popping up in a hot parking lot. Just working my way down. So I'm going to push this way. At the same time, I'm pulling down. Not pulling too hard. 
don't want to stretch it too much. This is not a, a right angle, obviously. It's kind of a kind of a, an off angle. So the cut has to be a little bit off too. So what we're going to do is you can see if you pull this where the where the wrinkle wants to be, it looks like it wants to cut from here. Like, like that would be okay, and then we'll just put a cut here. Again, I'm not going to go too far, you know, just in case I'm wrong. So this is a case where probably two cuts will be better. All right, let's see. Let's get the shape of this right first. Okay, looks like that's good. Maybe pulling down this side, and that looks good there. And that looks good there. What we want to do is cement this down to the metal here and a little bit over here as well. And this all has to be cut because this is where the instrument cluster goes. Now if it looks a little wavy in here, that's really only because the metal itself was a little bit wavy. Um, but again, it's going to be right up against the body. There will be a rubber gasket against the windshield there. so. It's not going to be visible. All right, let's take a look at the finished piece. So you can see these uh, curves and articulations match really well. Everything is nice and tight. Ready to go on to the car. Now I've only done a few of these, so I'm far from an expert. If you take your time, yours should come out at least as good as mine, probably better. Okay, now let's do the dash face. It's basically three pieces, the long main piece where the switches go, the radio plate with or without the hole for the radio, and the glove box door. The later 1975 and 76 cars used a slightly different pattern some people call square weave, so make sure you order the right one for your car. And here's the uh, metal backing for the dash, and that's the radio blank plate. Here's the material that we're going to cover it with. It's the basket weave, which is correct for 1974. And actually, this is a new version of the basket weave, which is really a lot closer to OEM that uh, 914 Rubber just uh, came out with. So what's going to happen is this will get glued onto this, and we'll cut around it, and then the whole thing will get glued to the dash. We don't have to go too crazy heavy on this. I'm going to coat this as well. You want to make sure you get around the edges really well. It doesn't peel up. Now we just have to get this placed nicely. I put these together so that the pattern wouldn't be interrupted. Now I'll just cut these. That's its own thing. And then for here, I'm just going to cut around the whole thing. And what's nice is that the metal acts as a straight edge, so it's easy to cut. Word of caution here. We're going to be taking these holes out to make room for the switches. This is going to be for the cigarette lighter, but most cars you will not take these out. So don't just go cut happy and go through all these and then realize later that you made holes where you didn't need them. And I might go radio delete on this bumblebee. Not quite sure, but you can see that it looks awesome. So here's a, an original glove box door. This is the way it left the factory, and you can see it's a little bit different in that the sides are tucked. The vinyl is tucked underneath the backing plate. You can see it on this side too. And then on the bottom, the material wraps completely around this round part. 
and then the handle of course just kind of gets put on top of that but it's straight cut across the top and that's what we'll be doing with this one but first I have to get this off so these are just uh, a couple of uh, Phillips screws to take out So a little washer and a special screw we'll put those in a bag get the other one out first handle off has been there for 40 odd years um, and we'll take the handle and these special screws and bag them so we don't lose them now we have to go about getting this backing plate off the glove box door without bending it or destroying it and I'm going to use a little brake clean here to uh, to squirt inside and hopefully that it will dissolve the glue brake cleaner is pretty good for a lot of stuff while we're waiting for the brake cleaner to do its magic please subscribe to the channel there's lots more to come in this bumblebee series so click subscribe it's free and you'll know when the new episodes are up buttons right there up oh. Here it comes. Ta-da! That didn't take very long at all. And you can see how the factory adhered it. And this is exactly how they did the part that holds all the switches and stuff too. It's just double stick tape to the dash. And now that this is off, it's gonna be easy to pull this from the, uh, from the material. And then I can kind of use this as a template for the new stuff. Make sure that I have the right size and um, everything is trimmed to the right dimensions. And I definitely want to get the, uh, the old double stick off. And thanks to the brake cleaner and 40 years or so, 45 years, 46 years, um, it's coming off pretty easy. Now because this is kind of a special piece, what I'm going to do is just trace the outline of the original. And I'll just get a straight edge and we'll cut that up. I feel a little like Bob Ross doing this. There we go. It's a beautiful little tree. It's a happy little glove box. <laughs> All right, the glue is tacked over, and now the handle side is going to go down where the flap is. We're not going to touch any of this until it gets onto the actual door. So just these sides are getting glued right now. Now we can just tightly wrap these back. Once again, because I'm using that great contact cement goes right down and stays. Now we'll just um, use an awl or some other small instrument to just mark and make the holes that we'll need for the handle. So here's some new double stick and we'll put it in approximately the same spots as the factory did. a little bit wider than what the factory used. So the easiest way to get this lined up is to just drop it down, eyeballing it. All right, well the holes are centered. We'll get this kind of in the ballpark. Then we'll get the other one. These baggies are super handy. I can't tell you how many times I've taken something apart and said, oh, I won't forget what that's for. And then I forget. <laughs> so now I just put everything in the baggie, even if it's just going in for a few minutes sometimes. Yep, perfect. And now we just have to glue this up and around. Wrap it around. Pulling up as I wrap. 
and stretching a little. Just kind of going around the whole curve. And then once you've got it around the whole curve, finish it off and press it down. And there it is, finished glove box door. All right, and now we take our finished covered metal piece here, and it's gonna go just like this onto the dash, and then the dash top will kind of come over that. And this gets attached to the dash metal with the same kind of double stick tape we did for the glove compartment. There's no tape on this side here, so I'm going to try to hold it there and on the sides, try to get it just so. Now that this is on, I can raise the dash back up and we can start putting the cap on. Now you'll see across the top that there are a bunch of slotted holes which the dash top goes into and some that go horizontally into the dash and one on this side too and they kind of both have to go in at the same time in order for the piece to settle so it takes a little bit of wrangling but we'll get it and here we have the dash top the star of the show um, it's got uh, nylon studs just like the ones from the factory. It's a metal subframe and the texture is just right. It's a really beautiful part and you want to make sure that you uh, are careful with it as you put it in. So we'll see if we can get everything lined up horizontally and vertically at the same time. <laughs> That's it. Look at that. There's a couple of dimples here from where I was pushing, but those will uh, eventually come out where I can steam them out. Looks amazing. So cool, it's gonna be great in the bumblebee. Now let's take a look at the nuts that cause everyone problems and why I like to take the dash out to work on it. It's these two right here. So you can see that they're behind, well the Ferrari's framed nice in there. <laughs> they're behind the instrument cluster. So getting your hands in there are really, really, really tough. But when you take the dash out, it could be easier. Anybody who's done this in the car is very jealous of what I'm doing right now. <laughs> So we'll just kind of get all of these on across the top and then uh, tighten them down. They don't have to be super tight, but tight enough. So we've got uh, two over there and one, two, three, four, five down there. Okay, now that all the nuts are on, I'm going to want to tighten the ones that are horizontal first to pull the dash into the metal and then we'll tighten the top ones to, uh, to get the top secured. I'm going to pull this in nice and close to the metal. Alright, now I have the radio delete plate and I'm not really going to put that in with any kind of permanence because there's a decent chance I'm going to get a radio for this car. So I'm just going to kind of line it up. I have two little tiny squares of tape just to hold it in place but you can see how it matches really nice against the basket weave the last part would be the glove box door now this is gonna have hardware that'll hold it in but I can kind of preview what it will look like pretty nice this dash pad is such a great part. The texture's just right. It fits perfectly. The basket weave looks just like OEM. 
and this dash is ready for the bumblebee. Now down here, below this, is where the knee pad is gonna go with its little uh, chrome reveal, which will kind of sit just above this and provide a nice finished edge for all this. And you never see this stuff when you're in the car because the dash is like up here and you have your instrument cluster right there anyway, so it's perfect. Okay, time for the ooh and ah tour. <laughs> Notice no cracks on the dash top like most of these cars. And you can see that the upper dash is really nicely upholstered out too. So this part of the car came out really great and I'm just hoping that the rest of it is as good. You probably look at your dash more than you look at your paint. So don't put up with a cracked and peeling mess. The entire project can easily be done in a weekend and a new dash makes a huge difference in any car. Hey, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel, the button's right there, so you know when the next episode drops. Please also become a patron for exclusive content and free swag at patreon.com slash iancar. Thanks so much for watching and to 914 Rubber for sponsoring this entire build. Links to all products are in the description. Be safe and enjoy.